You know what I don't have, though? Love songs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't sing love songs. We are so excited because we are talking with 16-time ACM award winner Carrie Underwood. Now 16. Yeah. Okay. Was a good was a good night? <laughs> it was a good night. Yeah. You're having a good year already. Yeah. I mean, I feel like every every year is every year we're breathing, doing our thing. Got got my family. Now we're kind of ramping back up into some some fun work stuff. So. Yes, and you've got new music. Yes. Okay, so let's dive in and talk about Ghost Stories. It's been a minute since you've had a solo single out because you've had the, of course, collaboration with Jason. And then, you know, you had your other projects that you've already done. But Straight Ahead Country, right. this is the first time since like 2018, right? I mean, I don't know. It went, I think so. Okay. <laughs> You're <laughs> Maybe like 2019. Okay. Okay, Probably maybe. 2019. Um, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we we did the Cry Pretty tour in 2019, and then um, the world fell apart for for a little bit. Um, I was able to do some, you know, passion projects. Um, got to make a Christmas album. Got to um, make a gospel album that I've always wanted to do. Um, so there were some things that we is like. I still want to make music. I still want to be creative. I still want to. I'm a bird. I want to sing. Um, so we, we, we made it happen, um, with like a minimal, you know, cause we were, it was like, what, what can we do by ourselves, you know? Right. And, um, so I got to do those things, um, and then been writing, been recording, been, um, busy as ever, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's time for some, some new Carrie music. Okay. Now, why was this the song that you thought we're going to lead off with this one? What was it about this song that really struck you? Um, well, f- with this project, I feel like we we cover a really broad um, range of um, feelings and music and influences. Um, I felt like Ghost Story was it was cinematic, which I love. Um, I feel like it's it's familiar enough, but it sounds fresh. Mm-hmm. I just felt like it was a good a good starting point. Um, to whatever, whatever, whatever happens next. Was how did you find it? Was it somebody like pitched it to you? Somebody brought it to you? Yes. Well, okay. I've I've been um, been writing a mm-hmm. lot over the past year, and um, some people that I work with, um, David Garcia, who's co producer, um, Hillary Lindsay, been working with her since day one, right? Um, and Josh Keir, who of course wrote Before He Cheats. We wrote Two Black Cadillacs. Um, he wrote One Away. Um, Josh so does those revenge songs he really does. good, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. So the three of them got together, and they were specifically wanting to write a song for me. So. First time you heard it, what what hit you? Like, was there a certain lyric, or was there something about it that you went, okay, yeah, the, I, I it's it. it's very well written. The lyrics are very cool. When you hear a ghost story, you're like, well, what is that? You know, is this what does it mean? Um, and the the take on it is that it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna haunt you like you broke it off I've moved on I'm fine you know but um, my memory is not gonna leave you so it's it's metaphorical you know I'm gonna be your ghost story um, I'll be haunting you you'll be wanting me uh, so it's very well written but I feel like the music for me is kind of what like really sucked me in um, of course those three would get together and write incredible lyrics but. Um, I felt like it just sounded different. It sounded different than anything yeah. that's on the radio. I felt like their chord choices were interesting. Um, Hillary was singing on the demo. So whenever she's singing, I feel like I can automatically kind of hear myself in it because we have about the same range. Um, so I just felt like, wow, this could be kind of epic. And it's very cinematic. It's yeah. very, it is dramatic. Um, and I, I like those things. We just came back from Las Vegas. So much fun to be out there. So let's talk about the residency. Yes. A reflection, the Las Vegas residency looks amazing. Thank you. People are absolutely loving it. I know sold out shows through December and you've got more that are happening now. Yes. Um, how much of that was your vision, and how did you get that out of your head and to somebody to be like, no, I want to set something on fire on stage? <laughs> um, oh, I feel like we we are getting to do so many of the things that we, like, would want to do on tour but are kind of impossible. Right. So it's like, you know, the setting the thing on fire, we have a, a really cool, like, waterfall moment. It's ever since something in the water came out, I don't want to, like, give give stuff away. Yeah. But ever since that came out, it was like, 
everybody's like, when are you going to, when, when, why aren't we doing this? And I'm like, I, if I'm playing 60, you know, 60 date tour, like whatever, I'm not going to go take a shower on stage every night and then deal with a crying baby <laughs> on the bus while I'm sopping wet. You know what I mean? Like it was just, it was a lot. Um, it would have been really hard to do that. But in Vegas, you're, it's a very controlled environment. It's your stage, you know, and, and we we wanted every single song to feel special and every single we, – we wanted lots of moments, and um, I feel like we accomplished that, and it's so much fun. It's so much fun. It looks like you're having fun. Yes. When you're doing it. Well, and it's, it's like a, it's a great – it's reflection. You know, we are reflecting yeah. on this career that I've been blessed enough to be a part of and to have, and – um, we just wanted those like greatest hits kind of moments that people could just come and, you know, know everything and sing along and have a good time. It has to be intimate for you as well because it's like a 5,000 seat theater. So obviously, you know, you've got this feeling that you're really connecting with that audience in a different way than you would at a huge, you know, big, huge arena. It is. It's really cool to have all of that energy in a theater mm -hmm. setting, and it, and that's the great thing about Vegas too. People are coming there to have fun, you know. So I feel like people are just ready, and they're ready to see a show, and they're interacting with you, and like the people are literally like feet from me. I can see all the faces and um, just get all the energy, and it's like it's a ton of energy kind of bottled up in a theater setting, which is, it's cool. So you mentioned that they're so close to you. Do you ever, like, find somebody, pick them out, and kind of connect with them, and then go, oh, no, I, I need to look away because this is feeling weird, like they're not paying attention, or something weird has happened where you're I've so close? Learned, <laughs> I've learned that, and we don't, they don't really do this in, in Vegas, but right. just in general, when people hold up signs, I've learned that I can't read them while I'm singing because I can't read different words than are coming out of my mouth. So if I'm singing and I start reading, I'll sing what's on the paper because my brain can't do the two things at the same time. I've never so thought about I that. I can't. If you're holding up a sign during one of my songs, baby, I can't read it. Oh, my gosh. That's hysterical. You know, let's talk a little bit about the book because we mentioned that you released it. And then we had, uh, you know, the world shut down. Yeah. And it was one of those things. You were on book, book tour. You were going out, seeing fans. And then it all had to be cut short, which I know we was, We were so lucky, though. Did you get it all in? We got 85 90% okay. of everything okay. in. That's you great. know, and, and what a, a crazy thing, too. You know, we wrote the book. Um, we had we have the fitness app. Right. Um, we did not know at the time that everybody was going to be relying on home fitness. You know, they, I mean, gyms were were yeah. shut down, were yeah. closed. Um, so it was it was an interesting thing to be like, wow. Um, I was glad I had it for myself. <laughs> and, you know, Find Your Path is the name of the book, now a New York Times bestseller. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I know that this is such a passion of yours, just talking about fitness and getting healthy. Um, when you were in the middle of the pandemic and, and having the Fit52 app and being able to open it, how much of that helped keep you level because I think all of us went a little bonkers like what are we doing we're all at home we're yeah. all with our family 24 <laughs> 7 and the gyms were closed so how much of that kind of helped you stay even keel I mean I feel like exercise is definitely a very important you know part of so many aspects of my life like obviously being healthy and working on that but also as a stress reliever and um, anytime, you know, I have a friend that is like, oh, I'm, you know, feeling down or whatever. I'm, I'm dealing with some stuff. I'm like, are you, do you work out? Do you take some time? I was like, because it matters. And I notice it in myself mm -hmm. if for whatever reason I'm like working or traveling um, and I don't get to work out. If it's been a few days, my husband will be like, can you please go work out? <laughs> like, I can, like, you you need to go work out. Um, and I'm like, I do. You yeah. are right. I talk about this a little bit in the book. Um, at first, when I first got into, like, paying attention to what I was, like, putting in my body and stuff like that, it was kind of for the wrong reasons. And I, I wanted to I wanted to look good on TV. Um, so I kind of had to switch my mindset. Um, and it took me, you know, a few years and some mistakes um, along the way. But it, it took me to where I was like, you need to focus on being healthy and everything else will 
will follow, you know, and you'll feel, feel good and you'll feel confident and, um, but you'll be healthy. And, um, yeah, it, I, I have a difficult job. It's hard being up on stage and singing the songs I sing in heels and, um, you know, you don't think of it as being something that's physical, but my show's physical and Mm -hmm. my songs are physical and I feel like I sing with my whole body. So, you know, we were talking about this earlier. You mentioned when we were mentioning the song, um, one of the writers and I said, Revenge songs are his thing. We really started thinking about this, and we said, you really have enough material now for an entire album of Carrie Strikes Back. I like it. I mean, we could do Before He Cheats. Maybe that's like some collection we do or whatever. You know what I don't have, though? Love songs. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I don't sing love songs. I would rather, like, kill kill a dude than talk about how much I love him. Um, no, it's it's true. I, I just love, like, the strong, you know, character that doesn't doesn't take anything from anybody. Um, and even if it's kind of in a different way, like you think about ghost stories, you know, she's not doing anything to get revenge on this guy. It's just like, I'm just telling you that you're going to want me back and I'm not going to be there. I mean, when we were looking at the list, we're like, this is a perfect Amazon playlist it just is yeah. Carrie's, you know, Carrie Strikes Back. We've got two black Cadillacs on there. We're blown away. I mean, like, it writes itself. If, truly. if you've been Church done wrong, bells. I got you. <laughs> I got love you. this so much. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Love hanging out with you. You too. Right. Always good to see you. We'll see you in Vegas. Yes.